Well, guys, you might want to rush to the bathroom because you're going to want to sit down and maybe relieve yourself. To <laughs> you're going to want to sit down because I have the full specs for Intel's Battlemage GPUs. And guys, it's looking insane. Let's talk about it. Okay, so yeah, Battle Mage, it's coming hot, hard, and heavy, boys, and yeah, it's looking really incredible if the specs are to be believed. Now, we've had a couple of different leaks in the past, and the last one, I believe, coming from the YouTuber Red Gaming Tech, actually had a slight spec reduction. However, the performance was still looking good, but guys, I decided to get to the bottom of what is going on with Battle Mage today, and you're gonna wanna pay attention because I think it's gonna blow your mind, so let's not waste any more time. Let's get right into this one now. There was actually some new info posted over on Twitter by the leaker Harukaze5719 not too long ago, where, as you can see in this image right here, he actually has what appears to be the inner poster for the upcoming Intel Battle Mage GPU. Now, of course, nothing's confirmed, so take this with a grain of salt. However, all of this is definitely starting to add up, and if we go ahead and actually start doing the math, well, it looks like this interposer is just 2.5% larger than the one that's being used on the Intel Arc GPUs, and I know that sounds bad, but wait a minute, guys, it gets way better, because we have to remember that these new GPUs are allegedly going to be produced on the TSMC 4 nanometer node, and this is where we have to start doing a little bit of math. So stay with me, guys. I'll try and make this painless, but just for a reference, the current Intel Arc GPUs are being produced on the TSMC 6 nanometer node. So what's the difference between 6 nanometer and 4 nanometer over at TSMC? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's go ahead and take a look. So in order to figure that out, I actually did go ahead and pull up a picture that comes from a website that I'll have linked in the description below as always, where they went ahead and kind of simplified the N7 to N6 to N5 to N3. And I did find some information also on the four nanometer node. And if we take a look here, you can see that the N5 node apparently has a 1.83 X logic density gain versus the N7 process. And the N6 process has a 1.18 X gain over that same N7 process, again, N6 being what ARC is being produced on. So if we do a little bit of math here, guys, we can find that the N5 node, which is the precursor to N4 that's allegedly being used on Battle Mage, stay with me, jingle, 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 um, apparently that N5 node is going to have a 65% density increase versus the current N6 node and a 11% speed increase versus the N6 node. But like I mentioned, Again, they're not using N5, they're using N4, which is a slightly improved version of N5. Stay with me, jingle, 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 jingle. So, what we're looking at here is, if we take a look at another article, we have information on N4P, and if we extrapolate that information of N4P versus N5, jingle, jangle, jingle, jangle, versus the N4 node, apparently we could be talking about a further 6% density increase versus N5 on the N4 node, and in terms of speed, a further 5% increase versus N5 for a total of N4 versus N6. We're looking at a 17% increase in speed and a 75% increase in density. Going from Intel Arc Alchemist to Intel Arc Battle Mage, their second generation GPUs based solely on the improvements to their silicon. Now, of course, there could be other architectural gains, but Doing the math here, guys, I've gone ahead and put together a chart on what exactly this would look like, and I think it's going to make a lot of sense, because taking a look at this alleged Battle Mage GPU, first I want you to take a look at the leaked information that we got from Red Gaming Tech, where he said it was apparently going to be 56 XE cores for a total shader count of 7,168, and allegedly 64 had been looked into, but was, I think he said, likely canceled, but don't quote me on that. So with that being said, people were a little bit disappointed because we're expecting 64 cores, a doubling. However, they were gonna be increasing their boost clocks as well, and I speculated probably increasing their L2 cache at the same time, leading to far higher bandwidth. And interestingly, when we do the math here, guys, actually, this is basically nearly spot on. Yes, it would be exactly 56 cores for a total of 7,168 shaders. And the only thing basically that maybe might be wrong about that leaked Red Gaming Tech info is I think he was saying they're shooting for three gigahertz clock speeds, but the math would suggest it would actually be 2.8 gigahertz. Now, of course, 
they could be making some improvements and actually hitting three gigahertz, or maybe it's just a goal and they'll actually fall short of it. But yes, it'll probably be somewhere between 2.8 and three gigahertz. Now, all of this is well and good. You can take a look at the specs here, guys. But what does this mean in terms of performance? I mean, is this even going to be any better or is it going to be hot trash? Let's take a look. So if we compare it to some NVIDIA GPUs here, you can see that in terms of teraflops, the ARC A770 is giving you 19.7 teraflops and the 4070 Ti in theory would be well a little bit over double the performance, albeit at a higher power target. Now, I believe Intel shooting for 225 watts again on their next generation GPU. However, I don't think they're going to hit it. I think it's going to creep up to 250 watts. And as for the other specs, I mean, we're talking about a teraflop range of 40 to 43 teraflops, depending on if they hit 2.8 or 3 gigahertz. And in terms of performance, we're talking over double the amount of performance of the ARC A770 and actually faster than the RTX 4070 Ti. In fact, it could be creeping up on the RTX 4080. I don't think it'll quite hit that amount of performance, but it could get close depending on how much, you know, improvement they get from IPC and the likes. It definitely could happen. And guys, at a similar-ish die size, it'll probably be a little bit bigger as the Interposer was suggesting. Well, it's probably not going to cost a ton more. Of course, the N4 node is more expensive, so the cost will go up, but I don't think it's going to be insane. In fact, in terms of price, I'm expecting this to land between $450 and $500, which would actually make it the best value GPU on the market, I think, by basically a landslide. If they're able to pull that off and get it out sooner rather than later, maybe the beginning of next year, well, then not only will they be getting GPUs out faster than NVIDIA or AMD, but also they'll be undercutting them in price and bringing you substantial performance increases with 16 gigabytes of VRAM and a probably roughly 50% increase in memory bandwidth as well, as well as, of course, more cash. And of course, we won't know the price until it basically launches, but I do think they could definitely hit that target if they choose to do so. So with all that information, guys, I just want to bring you guys this video to explain that these specs are basically like this is what it's going to be. I, there could be some, you know, increases or decreases in cash. We could be seeing increases or decreases in IPC, that sort of thing. And, you know, the final clock speeds, of course, can change, but I do believe believe these core counts is exactly what you're going to see because all you got to do is some simple math to find out that yes this is what the battle mage gpu is going to be and i do think that both nvidia and amd should definitely be worried about their margins getting cut into by intel's extremely competitive performance and pricing on their upcoming Battle Mage GPUs. But yeah, that's just what I think. Do you think the Battle Mage is gonna be an absolute banger or do you think it's gonna fall short of expectations? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and Nvidia release new GPUs. Also, if you wanna see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.